Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan with a focus on XRP today. I'm back on my favorite site. Yeah, this is the Bitso liquidity index for XRP, and it just keeps going. I know I showed this uh, in the last two videos and I was very encouraged, but I'm even more encouraged today. Now I know Galgatron, this is a tiny bit of volume in a sea of a lot of supply, but if this is what I'm seeing now with the start of MoneyGram getting into this corridor, and look at this is August 10th, 2019. So this is uh, where they're at. This is obviously a result of MoneyGram and if we aren't expected to really see anything significant until Q4 or the Q1 of 2020, uh, and but I can see this kind of spiking of volume in a very short period of time, 10 days in a row, just, just, just increasing day after day after day. I'm very excited. So I know it's just a, a, a start, but I think it's a wonderful start. Okay. Some of you have been talking about doing some estimated costs for what it is uh, in terms of transfer fees to move money using MoneyGram, and you found Western Union was more expensive in some cases. Well, I didn't find that, and I just do think it depends on what corridor you're in and also what service you use. So when I used the Western Union website and I decided to move money to the United States at a uh, thousand dollars in US dollars. I chose to do the cash pickup and I can pay that from my bank account. That is going to have a transfer fee of $21. If I choose to move that money using my debit card, there's a transfer fee of $114.99. And if I use a credit card, it's going to cost me an additional $141.99. So now I should also point out that if I do choose to do the uh, bank account, it can take up to four days to arrive. Now, if I'm going to move that money from Japan to the United States using SBI Remit, which is also the MoneyGram partner, uh, I'm same destination country. I'm going to send money to the United States in the form of USD. I'm going to use the 10 minute service. Uh, this is the remittance amount in yen because the dollar is a little bit stronger than the yen right now. My remitt remittance charge is 1,480 yen, which is about 12 bucks. So it is half the price. So for people who are finding that MoneyGram is not the cheapest, again, I just think it depends on what corridor you're in and what service you're using. Now, I, wow, I'm really big in this one. I want to take a look at this. This is the money transfer providers cross border volumes in the previous 12 months. And the reason why I think this is important to look at is because we know that MoneyGram is the second largest remittance company in the world. But when we, when we take just the cross border volumes out of there, you can see Western Union is clearly number one. Then comes the UAE exchange. They are a Ripple partner, followed by TransferWise, and then fourth is MoneyGram. So when I was doing preparation for this video, I found something really fun, and that is Ramana Kumar. He's the Senior Vice President and Head of uh, Payments for First Abu Dhabi Bank. The first Abu Dhabi bank was the very first bank in the Middle East to use Ripple. That was back in February 2017. He has been chosen to be a speaker at a, uh, what, what, what is this? The Four Seasons in Saudi Arabia, uh, March 2020. It's amazing. They have the speakers lined up already, uh, for an event for it, for a fintech event. And you can see that um, Mr. Kumar uh, was instrumental in the first live implementation of blockchain with Ripple for cross-border payments. He has participated in many forums focusing on future payments of financial inclusion, digital wallets, KYC, and identity fintech 
and blockchain. Well, this is really why I got excited because I found that MoneyGram just did a tie up recently back in April with the first Abu Dhabi bank using their wallet called what's the wallet called the wallet is called pay it and here is their wallet here it's it's interesting now because uh any deal that moneygram does or has done is really a tie up with ripple so this wallet will have complete access to moneygram's wide global network as well as the 50 million users that use the platform annually and you know the uae sends over 44 billion in remittances annually it's a huge amount yet it's double what moneygram is doing on its own so every new tie up with moneygram means a tie up with ripple and in yesterday's video ripples uh michelle bond remember she's the global head of government regulation she cited that the capital city of uae which is abu dhabi is one of the leaders in terms of regulatory clarity so i am feeling very encouraged for xrp to work in this corridor as well and a little bit of Japanese news. This is the Japan Virtual Currency Exchange Dealers Association. They have a new member, and that new member is a wholly owned subsidiary of WireX called WireX Japan. And according to a article and quote from their, what is it, their chief marketing officer, his name is Mateen Lamming. He says that, yeah, they want to become a crypto asset exchange provider here. And they put in uh, an application. And to do so, yeah, it is really a rigorous and diligent procedure, as he uh, quoted. And he did say, that's all I really want to say. So he's being a little bit secretive and holding back on the details. In Japan, it takes up to 24 months to go through that process. There are reportedly 150 applications in the queue. Only 16 were approved in 2017. There were zero approved in 2018. And just three have been approved so far in 2019. And I want to thank CZ from Binance. Yeah, I know he is a little bit under the under fire right now, but he was very instrumental in creating one of the first donations on the blockchain. It was a pilot for transparency and it raised money for the people of West Japan last summer when they had these devastating floods. So last July, the southwestern part of Japan had, wow, successive heavy downpours. Uh, it caused devastating floods and really bad mud flows. I mean, the, the landslides were just deadly. 225 people lost their lives. There are still 13 missing. The greatest one hour and three day rainfall records were um, recorded. Some of the areas hit actually had 39 inches of rain. Those triggered the flash flooding from rivers and gosh, it resulted in 16 feet or five meters of water in the worst hit areas. I'll show you a picture that may be very shocking to you. This little pony, don't worry, uh, he, he's okay. His name is Leaf, but when there was floods, uh, he, he saved himself by, by getting on the roof of this house. He actually stayed up there for a couple of days before he was rescued, but he is okay. And he got a lot of attention at the time more than 8 million people were affected by these floods i think 17,000 homes were severely damaged and it was really really wonderful that um cz put together that donation and just in the last couple of days this is miss bitcoin she is kind of a celebrity here in japan uh, she got a um, certificate from the hit uh, areas or the devastated areas, an official certificate by the government to thank Binance 
for their help in raising those funds. So it was a very successful pilot. And I think that the blockchain, use of blockchain in donations makes a lot of sense because we all know that the transparency for donations is very important. And speaking of donations, the South Korean holding company, they are going to use a Ripple fork to develop a donations platform. How surprising is that? It's a big holding company called SKCNC, and these plans were unveiled just yesterday. And uh, this is going to support its own stable coin, which is pegged to the Korean won, and it's called Chain Z. Anyway, it's just, I think, very interesting that they chose to use uh, the Ripple platform and forked off that. Okay, everybody. Yeah, we are jumping to the fluff. This fluff is a request that I got. So yeah, sure. No problem. I mean, he put something very cute. He said, put a little puff into your fluff. And what he means by that is the puffer fish and the puffer, puffer fish, uh, as I grew up, called it is actually called fugu here in japan and there's some you know it's not as crazy dangerous as you might think because uh there is a very uh strict license in order to be able to prepare the fish to be served as food and it's very common there is just in fact just in tokyo alone or is it all of japan i'm not so sure it's maybe all of japan because i can't be just in Tokyo alone. There are eight Michelin star fugu restaurants here. I think it's got to be in Japan because having eight Michelin that just serve fugu seems a little outrageous. So it must be Japan. Uh, the fugu restaurants though are so common and it's yummy. It's a little expensive. Uh, but the licensed chefs know how to remove the organs that contain the poison, which is very, very poisonous. And also there is a little bit of risk with the eyes and the skin as well. But I would come to Japan and I would tell you that don't be afraid because it's not like we had any deaths last year, but I will uh, give you a caveat. And that is that the emperor is not allowed to eat fugu. <laughs> so yeah, I guess the risk is there. So yeah, just know that. But here's what it will look like in its most mm, common way of being served, which is uh, in the sashimi. And it's always done in this kind of a spiral display with um, the negi onions in the middle. This is a little bit of the fugu uh, skin. And it's yummy. It's very yummy. It's got a very unique texture to it. And usually you eat it not with soy sauce, but with ponzu, which is a little bit of a uh, citrus, citrus uh, flavor. You can also eat it in kind of uh, sushi style, nigiri style. And it's also very, very yummy. And then another very popular way to eat it is in nabe, which is the Japanese word for kind of a hot pot and you'll find that that is really popular in the winter time and of course like japan does for all its food it makes knives specifically uh, for the use of certain foods whether it's a vegetable or a meat or what have you i think every food in japan has a custom designed knife and this is the knife that's used for fugu it's called a fugu hiki and one of the most fascinating things is when it's traded because it is expensive it can run up to about 200 us dollars a gram and that's a wholesale price uh the wholesale side of buying fugu is done secretly and i want to show you how that is actually done uh, they have a hand signal inside a glove so nobody can see your signal your signal is of course your the price so they have a secret way to uh handshake if you will to 
communicate what price you're willing to pay that wholesaler for that fugu and it's done in an auction format so let me just show you really quick this is this is fascinating see how he reaches in there and he gives his price yeah so no one else can find out what the other buyers are offer offering uh the it's blind it's a blind price so it's very very interesting and uh there is this is funny now the guy who did this video uh i i believe i watched it i i think he's uh he's american just because he could be canadian but i think he's american he's got a very successful channel he does food from all over the world and he was in japan and they ate at a fugu restaurant and the title is a little bit click baitish eating japan's poisonous puffer fish almost died ambulance he didn't he had a great experience he loved it he went to a restaurant that served it in many different ways i think this this video is quite enjoyable what i was so shocked is it was uploaded just january 2019 it's had 14 million views holy cow that is unbelievable yeah three people three million people are subscribed to his food channel it's good anyway i recommend but the reason why i l l initially laughed when i clicked onto this tab was the chef here is describing if you do get poisoned what happens to you when you die because it attacks your muscles and you can't breathe anyway he gives an example <laughs> of what it looks like if you were to eat the poison <laughs> it's so funny anyway i'm going to put the link to this in the description below and if you're interested in watching it uh have fun and do eat fugu when you come to japan all right everybody take care for now sayonara bye bye